Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital Today channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Sunny sets up a trap for Betty and her boss to fall into, while Dante starts to wonder where Valentin was when Anna's house caught fire. Recap from Monday, August 14's GH. Nettie checks on Olivia. Betty shares some news with Mason and Austin. And Carly reminds Joss of Sonny's importance in their lives. At the GH recap for Friday, it was mentioned that Carly refused to let Sonny take her home and that Dante agreed to let Maxie live at his house. When Nettie tells Sonny he wants some space and departs from the penthouse, Sonny is having a phone argument with Selena. As Betty arrives, Sonny sends Dex to hide and listen in. He informs her that there has been a change of plans as they talk about Avery. After she returns from camp, he tells her that he won't be back until after five and begs her to stay and watch over Avery. Betty is aware of the new plans. He acknowledges that he had some concerns about the new nanny, but Avery appears to truly like her. That makes her happy to hear. He exposes her. Sunny and Betty converse. Sonny tells Dex to keep an eye on Betty as soon as he steps outside. He has received a flash drive from Brick that is filled with made-up evidence that he plans to hide for Betty to locate. She will bring it to anybody she works for, and it is filled with erroneous Pikeman information. Sonny informs Dex of Betty's plot. The boss discusses the information they have on Mason and his extortion of Ava. Ava told him the truth about this, but Betty is unaware of this. The flash drive not only contains fake information, but it also has tracking software that will grant access to whoever is pursuing him. Dante discovers his mother at the Metro Court pool working. He shares with him how upsetting it was to watch Nettie leave last night with Sunny. She might have to accept that her husband is no longer with her. Olivia warns Dante that their union might be ending. She is still trying to find Leo's father. Since Nettie may never again be Ned, she needs to ascertain who he is. She finds it terrifying, but she must learn to deal with it. After receiving a call informing him of the fire at Anna's, he must leave. He hopes she has success with Nettie. Dante visits his mother at work. Nettie arrives, happy to have avoided having to go to the house and running into Tracy. She observes that he received some solid blows. Despite how he is feeling, he is relieved that she is unharmed. Olivia requests that Nettie stay. She informs him that she has learned he is no longer Ned before he can depart. He must remain true to the changes he has undergone. Nettie is sad for her pain as well as the pain he knows it causes Tracy and Leo. But all he knows how to be is Eddie. Nettie inquires about Olivia. He apologizes for leaving her in the dark after her kindness to him. He was freaking out because Tracy wanted to commit him. Olivia acknowledges that he has changed. She wouldn't subject her husband to electroshock even if she believed it would make him return. Nettie beams. Joss queries her mother about her involvement in a bar brawl at Carly's. She tells her about going to see Olivia last night as she serves them coffee. She misses working there a lot. She is now much more determined to reclaim her hotel. Joss queries her mother about the bar brawl. They headed to the high cider seeking a diversion, whereupon chaos ensued. She details the altercation with her in detail, including how the man who chased Olivia fled. Joss regrets having kept her overnight at the PCPD. Her mother acknowledges she could have returned home earlier but refused to let Sonny assist her. Accepting his assistance is not the same as ensuring that he is stable enough to defend the family. Carly justifies her refusal to accept Sonny's assistance. Her daughter questions whether she's just okay with Michael and Dex, watching him for that reason. As she discusses their ties to one another, Carly becomes agitated. She is powerless, and a conflict with Sonny would be unhealthy. Joss claims that this is also unhealthy. They must remember that Sunny is still family, according to her mother. Carly describes her actions. Sunny visits and queries his ex about why she refused to sign her out last night. Her pride, perhaps? Carly is asked by Sunny about her night in jail. 
she is adamant that was not the case. She can't let him save her anymore, even if they will always be in each other's lives. He understands. He also has a lot of other obligations. Austin runs into his office, annoyed that Mason has returned and in need of a headache remedy. Then Betty enters, and he informs them that this is not a clubhouse. He is reminded by Mason that they are all simply workers. Mason's head is hurting. They should have the opportunity to examine Sunny's this afternoon, Betty informs them. The doctor is hoping that would put an end to this and that they will leave him alone. Mason makes it obvious that he won't ever abandon him. Austin was irritated by Mason and Betty. None of this is what Austin wants. Mason claims that while he may pretend to be the hero, in the end, he really cares about himself. Betty departs, promising to leave Sunny's with something in hand. Austin queries why the boss even needs details about Sunny and Pikeman. Mason doesn't know, but their boss will get it if he wants it. Dex follows Betty out of the building. At Anna's home, the fire department is just getting started. Valentin advises her to go. She sobs. There's nothing left here. Nothing left of my life. Valentin and Anna at Anna's destroyed home. Instead of being at work, he wishes he had been there with her. This might have gone so very wrong. They're just fortunate she wasn't home when the fire was started. If the arsonist waited for Anna to go, Anna wonders. Victor must be grinning at this from hell. She is certain. Many people have been harmed by her. People passed away and left behind families. She doesn't blame whoever is asking for payment from her. Anna and Valentin discuss fire. She doesn't deserve any of this, he tells her. Nothing she did warrants retaliation, she inquires. Since when? Even though it isn't the solution, retribution might often seem like it is. He is familiar with how that is. When Dante arrives, he asks whether she's ready to make a statement. She refuses Valentin's offer to accompany her to the train station. To obtain Anna's statement, Don calls in. Dante and Anna discuss the specifics of the fire at the PCPD. She informs him that Valentin left last night to attend to a damaged water main at ELQ but never returned. Valentine, according to Anna, was out late. For a phone call, the officer emerges. To determine the time Valentin was present, he requests that the surveillance tape from ELQ the previous evening be pulled. He then turns to Anna and asks that they discuss the cause of the fire. Anna and Dante discuss fire. They reflect on it. She acknowledges that this fire feels odd in some way. Instead of igniting a careless fire, a professional agent would have eliminated her. She would be murdered if the WSB so desired. She says, this just feels like vengeance, plain and simple. He says her guilt might be impairing her judgment. It's possible that the fire was purposefully messy to confuse her. In the WSB, they both engaged in similar behavior. She murmurs something about logistics before announcing that she needs to locate a place to stay. He apologizes to her for what transpired. He receives a call after she has left confirming that Valentin's car was never parked in the ELQ lot. Nanny Betty is trapped by Sunny. In the general hospital recap for August 14, 2023, Sunny asserts his authority. Highlights of the general hospital recap. In this episode, Sunny devised a strategy to uncover the truth about Betty and her superiors. He also spoke with a bewildered Carly. Carly also gave Jocelyn a hard time. Olivia was happy that Nettie had called to see how she was doing. Then, as Dante investigated Valentin's story, Anna made an effort to identify the perpetrator of the fire that destroyed her home. Let's now delve a little more deeply into the specifics. Fly to the spider. At Sunny's house, Ned soon became restless and insisted on leaving. Nanny Betty then arrived at Sunny's request, and Sunny had to cope with her. While Avery was away at day camp, he wanted her to remain with him before returning to his vacant apartment afterward. He later revealed to Dex that Betty was to uncover a flash drive containing bogus information about his company, but Dex was to covertly follow her and keep an eye on her. 
Nanny Austin's office was Betty's next destination so she could inform Austin and Mason of Sonny's situation. Austin appeared untrustworthy, but Mason was delighted to learn that Betty would have access to the penthouse. He only hoped that would get rid of Betty and Mason for good. Unfortunately, Mason told him that neither he nor his boss, who was formerly a she but has now changed into a he, would ever let him go. The following morning, Olivia began her day attempting to move past her near-arrest experience in the Metro court pool. Even when Olivia told Dante that she had to accept the fact that she had lost her husband, he was taken aback. Olivia was startled to see Nettie after Dante left the pool area. In fact, he went looking for her to check on her following the incident at the High Cider and Port Charles Police Department. She was appreciative that he had stood up for her against Mason, but she could now accept the fact that the man standing in front of her was now Eddie Main rather than Ned. Jocelyn had angered Carly by leaving her at the PCPD all night while her phone was off. Finally letting it go, she revealed how and why she had gotten into the high cider bar fight. Jocelyn was perplexed as to why Carly didn't simply let Sonny to sign her out. After all, by having Dex defend Sonny, she was letting the pass go. Carly explained why she wasn't letting the pass go, but that Dex still needed to defend a man who wasn't in need of defense so that he could hold on to power. The topic of losing Morgan then came up, but at least Carly acknowledged that her justifications for not having Sunny sign her out following her bar fight were unclear. Jocelyn was undoubtedly perplexed, but Sunny was also perplexed when he visited to inquire as to why she simply refused to allow him to assist her. She acknowledged that she could no longer rely on Sonny for assistance. The following morning, Valentin was there to assist Anna in picking up the debris of her burned-out home. Valentin believed that what had happened was his fault, and she felt as though her life had ended. Even worse, she didn't know whether the arsonist intended for her to flee or intended for her to perish. They were both aware that she was the target of a retaliation plan, though. She couldn't be certain, but she wondered whether it was someone she had harmed in the past. Valentin was left wondering why Anna didn't want him to go to the PCPD when Dante quickly showed up to take Anna there to give a statement. Once they were in the police station, Anna explained what had transpired. But Dante then inquired as to where Valentin was. Why Valentin didn't show up at Anna's place till the morning eluded him. When he was by himself, he requested E.L. Key security footage to check if Valentin had indeed been present all night. He eventually realized he was never actually there. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.